Hello everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Evania Yafi I'm lecturer in Universitas Negeri Malang And now I'm PhD student in UTM Malaysia My field is early childhood education I'm very interested in this seminar because I can share knowledge with others And I will show in the first, the first session on 8 July 2020 See you there Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh for all our dear participants and keynote, keynote, keynote speakers in the international webinar. Um, this is me, Muhammad Kadura. I'm a, I'm a PhD candidate student in UTM University, Malaysia, in TESEL program. Uh, so, inshallah, I will share my experience and my knowledge with all our dear lecturers and uh, teachers in the, in the international webinar tomorrow morning, I think, 8 a.m. So, wait me there and wait all of us to share and to exchange the um, knowledge and experience between all of us. It will be a happy day and a shiny day for all of us. Thank you so much. See you soon, inshallah, dear. Buongiorno, salamat pagi. Nama saya Ilaria Javarini. Thank you very much to my friend Evania. I really appreciated this invitation to this webinar. I am a speech language therapist. In Indonesian, it will be therapist bichara. I don't speak Indonesian but I learned just a few words for this event. <laughs> I live in Milan, in the north of Italy. I attended classical studies and uh, at in, attended a bachelor degree in speech and language therapy in the University of Milan. Right now, I'm working with children with learning disabilities and speech disorders. I'm attending a postgraduate course in learning disabilities and speech and language uh, disorders. And I'm really happy to um, to be part of this webinar. On the 8th of July, I'm going to show my presentation, which title is Protective and Risk Factors for Language Development Delay. Thank you very much in advance. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm Sun Qi Hua from Hebei Normal University, China. My major is in English teaching. Currently, I'm reading PhD in curriculum and instruction in University of Technology Malaysia for one year. It's a real honor to have an opportunity to share my ideas and thoughts on curriculum based on distance learning in coronavirus disease era. Thanks for listening and please feel free to give any suggestions. Thanks very much, Eva. That's all. Bye. Good morning and thank you for having me here with you today. My name is Aripo Samson Venatius. I am from Nigeria. My area of specialization is technical education. I will be featuring in the second section of this seminar, which is slated for the 11th day of July 2020. The seminar promises to be educative. You are duly invited. Please make it a date with us. God bless you until we meet on that day. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nilu Sakina Nuraini. I'm from Primary Education, Universitas Negeri Malang. Good day, everyone. Hi. My name is Olushala Fadumiye, pupil of Peolu Funke. Uh, my friends called me Mary, or oh, they shortened my name to Titi. So some call me Titi, why some call me 
Mary because I have a long name. Um, I come from Nigeria and studied my PhD in um, University Technology, Malaysia, that's UTM. I'm from the, the Faculty of Education and um, my feed is in Educational Technology. Uh, I really want to appreciate um, my colleague, Eva, for bringing up this type of um, program, you know, uniting us together, coming together to talk on different topics given unto us. So I'll be featuring uh, the 14th of July. So I'll be expecting everyone to be there. Thank you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Hello, everyone. My name is Taufik Islam Salama. I am a faculty member in the Department of Educational Technology, School of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang. I am now also a PhD student in the Department of Instructional Systems Technology, School of Education, Indiana University, Bloomington, United States. I'm happy to join in the seminar and then I will see you in the third sessions of the seminar, 14th of July, 2020. See you there. Hello, this is Manal Ali. English language literature and PhD student in UTM University, Malaysia in educational technology specialization. I would like to welcome everybody here today, the Dean of uh, Education Department of in Malang University, my colleagues from different parts of the world who are joined in this international webinars, all participants uh, who are interested in this uh, webinar. I am pleased to be with you on the session of 14th of July with my colleagues. We will discuss the topic about learning based technology uh, in COVID-19 era. I hope you are interested and join us in all sessions. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let me introduce myself. My name is Roshi Damayani. I'm coming from Indonesia. Uh, for I'm lecturer in State University of Malang. Uh, my research field is in early childhood education, especially in multiple intelligence. And I will show in international webinar in session four. I think it's enough. Uh, nice to meet you and see you later. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum everyone. Hope all of you are fine. With good health. I'm Anwar Saleh. I'm from Jordan. I'm doing my PhD in University Technology Malaysia. And my major is measurement and evaluation. Hope I can see you in fourth session in 17th July. Inshallah. Bye bye. Hello everyone, my name is Yuda Alfian, uh, Vice Director of Sangar Corp, the best educational company. See you in the last session in 17 July 2020. Yuda. Yuda. Oh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh <laughs> Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen Welcome to the webinar series Educational Revolution Well, okay, today this is actually the last session But unfortunately, we have still well, today's session actually, okay This webinar is held by Department of Early Childhood and Primary Teacher Education Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, and Sanggar Corporation. We've just already watched together our, our video CV from all keynote speakers.
Selamat datang Bapak Ibu, semoga sehat selalu. Bertemu lagi di sesi yang terakhir dari webinar series kita, Educational Revolution. Di mana acara ini diselenggarakan oleh e, jurusan Kependidikan Sekolah Dasar dan Prasekolah, jurusan KSDP Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Negeri Malang, bekerja sama dengan Sanggar Corp. Tadi merupakan tayangan kurikulum VT dari semua keynote speaker kita. Well, I will tell you again my name. My name is uh, Selfie and I am your moderator for today's session. I'm a faculty member of the Department of Primary School Teacher Education in Universitas Negeri Malang. And I am enjoy and um, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you in this webinar. Well, 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 okay. Before we start this webinar, I would like to add some information to you again. This webinar series is held in four sections, and this is the last session, but actually you can also watch our first session in Universitas Negeri Malang channel, and the, for the second and the third session from Rosevania YouTube channel. And you can talk to us during this webinar, actually you can uh, ask questions using a chat box, uh, and I hope we can answer all of the questions today, but some of the questions, but if it is not answered today, we will send it by you to you via using a uh, WhatsApp group. Okay, we will have a three, three keynote speakers as usual. And we have uh, 20 minutes for Q&A sessions at the end. Later on today, we'll have a special guest today. We also have a closing statement from our head department, Dr. Sutarno, to close this webinar. I will also speak in Bahasa Indonesia a little bit, just to make sure you gain the correct information uh, of each panelist if it is needed. Well, maybe we have to jump for the next session, yeah? Okay, now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sutarno, the Head Department of Early Childhood and Primary Teacher Education in Universitas de Grimalang, to kindly give an uh, closing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Sutarno. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and happy greeting to keynote speakers and all participants in the International Education Revolution webinar series. I am proud and honored to be the head of the Department of Early Childhood Education and Elementary Teacher Education, Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, which has lecturers who took the initiative to organize the International Education Revolution Web webinar series because of concern about the condition of education, especially in kindergarten and playgroup during the COVID-19 pandemic. Students need the help and support of educators with professional education backgrounds who understand the state of their development. If education is only turned over to parents who have lacked insight to early childhood education and lack understand how to help the state of their development, it is fear that the children will be less prepared to face challenges in the uncertain future. Indeed, parents and family are the first and main foundation of education. However, it's insufficient to for current and future condition. Early childhood needs education that is handled by professional education 
in this case, an early childhood education teacher. In the condition of COVID-19 pandemic, learning that was face-to-face -face in school by teachers changed their teaching style from face-to-face -to, -face to distant learning. This seminar was held in collaboration between the Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, and Sanggar Corps. We are proud that we successfully, successfully invite speakers from seven countries, including Indonesia, Malaysia, China, Italy, Jordan, Palestine, and Nigeria. The seminar was basically designed to support early childhood educators who are now experiencing shocks in the all aspects of life, including early childhood education during the COVID-19 pandemic. The department consists of two programs, namely postgraduate and undergraduate of early childhood education and undergrad of elementary teacher education. The seminar was a social program for teacher. The aim of this to share knowledge and help teacher in this time. The seminar was held for session with 12 main speaker on 6, 11, 14, and 17 July. After this seminar, this will be uh, inspiring. Uh, international conference EGPA to be held in October 3rd. We, we hope that the participant will now do in, involved in EGPA activities are uh, intent and can be transferred to others colleagues. To the end, I wish to express my graduate gratitude to all participants for your all cooperation and contribution to this seminar. I take this opportunity to thank the committee for their remarkable effort and my gratitude also belong to all keynote speakers in this seminar. In this time, public health issues are as a priority, but on the others and hand education for young individuals young children is also important and serious and I, I hope this seminar is very meaningful for all of us thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sutarno, for giving us a closing statement. Yeah. And that was very interesting for us. All right, everyone is good right now? I hope so. Well, today, maybe we can jump into another session, actually, run into our main session. I will read our today's topic and introduce our key speakers. Our topic today is teaching and evaluation for children in COVID era. And the first speaker is Mrs. Rossi Damayani. The second speaker is Mrs. Anwar Saleh. And the third speaker is Mr. Yuda Alfian Haki. Well, now we are connecting to Ms. Yani. Ms. Rossi Damayani, hello, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. I Can will you hear talk. Me? Yes. Okay. It's clear. I will talk a little bit about her background. She holds her master degree in early childhood education mm -hmm. from Universitas Negeri Jakarta, and now she is a lecturer mm -hmm. in Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang. Well, today she will be sharing to us about early childhood Excuse learning me? in the COVID Ms. era. Wait. Okay. Yes. 
uh, uh, your voice is delay. Okay, that's okay. Maybe a little bit technical. I'm uh, lost yeah. your voice. That's okay. <laughs> okay, well, she will be sharing to us about early childhood learning in the COVID era. Without further ado, time is yours, Mrs. Yani. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Praise be Allah for giving us convenience in being able to attend today's meeting. Salawat and salutation were bestowed upon the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Honorable Head of Department Elementary and Early Childhood Education, the Honorable all of presenter and committee of this international webinar series and all of participants that I am proud of. Today, I will introduce myself first. I am Rashida Mayani, very grateful to be able to share with all of you in this amazing forum. On this occasion, I will present the topic about early childhood learning in the COVID era which is uh, I will focus more on how to design learning experience for young children. Okay, let's get started. Thank you, Evania, to share my screen. Okay, here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, when we discuss about early childhood, uh, next slide, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when we discuss about early childhood, we have in mind is birth to eight years old children with a cute face and funny behavior maybe. However, behind the cuteness, early childhood has special characteristic and is different from other stage of age. This characteristic greatly influences the ability and learning process of early childhood. Next. Okay, this is the characteristic of early childhood. They has a high curiosity, they have high a high curiosity for children. The world is very interesting to explore. Children also social beings who learn through interaction with people around them. Early childhood also poten a potential learner because early childhood is an effective period for children, uh, effective learning period for children. Therefore, provider early childhood education needs to fulfill the following principles. Yeah. Can you read? Uh, the characteristic of early childhood. Okay, next. Okay, in this slide, we know that among the principle of early childhood learning, something like learning through playing, oriented to the development and needs of children, focus on shaping character and life skill, and using various concrete learning resources uh, such as real media, as well as pictures, research of person, and videos. Okay, next slide. Okay, educating during pandemic. It means bagaimana dunia pendidikan selama uh, di masa pandemic ini. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that COVID-19 has become a plague that attack whole the world. The presence of the virus has a major impact on the life of the majority people in the world. Every day, we hear an increase in the number of people affected by this plague. All of hospitals are full, human life simultaneously slowing down, Social activities are stopped so that economic activity also slow down. Even almost stops, 
everyone is required to stay at home by the government and to prevent transmission of the virus. Next slide, please. How about in education? Then we know that education is part of human social life. The prison of this pandemic has helped to change the world order in education. With the session of social activities, the school were ordered to close. We know many school, uh, all of schools ordered to close by the government. Both work and study must be carried out from home. Teachers are asked to switch learning models from offline to online learning. Parents, uh, parents also suddenly turn into teacher of the children at home. It's very, very uh, awesome, yeah. Okay, next slide. Why children must learning from home? The pandemic era, ladies and gentlemen, has forced everyone to re to return the the most essential things of life to fight for included in the case of children and education the high number of children exposed to covid-19 make adults have to consider what is the most essential from uh, from children education you know that uh, from uh, what is uh, UNICEF? Many children has attack of uh, this virus, yeah. So that children must remain to at home, so as to be prevent from spreading and learning with parents at home. Okay, next slide. But on another hand, awareness of the import importance of Early childhood education is also very big and hard to miss. We know that education in the early childhood period is our foundational in nurturing a lifelong love of learning, harnessing their curiosity and exploration of the world, developing social connectivity and sense of belonging identity uh, and so, sense of belonging identity and well-being so next so next okay Jen, thank you okay based on this awareness and the current of pandemic condition early childhood education needs to make a breakthrough or solution to meet today's challenge Today's, uh, today's condition make teachers and parents have to strengthen collaboration and go hand in hand as partners in optimally su supporting children's development. Next. Okay, how division of role? Uh, the division of role between school teachers and parents. We know that in this slide, you can read the teacher as an expert in the education process acts as a planner in compiling and in compiling learning experience and is responsible to for evaluating the achievement of child development. So uh, teacher have role to planning the uh, what is learning experience for children, yeah? And how about parents? Parents with all with all the their limitation, they have to help by supervision of teacher. Uh, have role to what is uh, teaching, yeah? Teaching the children at home, and school as manager of the education program are responsible for the sustainability of the education process with this collaboration children are expected to develop optimally i hope next okay let we check one by one teachers role okay next 
Next. Next, please. This is just uh, some words uh, from expertise that the rapid emergence of the unpracticized Here we are. Okay. Uh, the rapid emergence of the unprecedented pandemic calls of the well evidence expertise, responsiveness, and creativity of early years teachers. Uh, let me say in Indonesia that adanya pandemic ini membuat kita semuanya kreatif, gitu ya. Bagaimana menanggapi dan menjawab tantangan yang ada di pandemik. Earlier teachers to need to embrace the chance to strengthen partnership with children, families, and cares, and learn about their words and families. Yeah, integrating their individual context and needs into planning for learning experience. Jadi guru PAUD perlu menjadikan masa pandemik ini sebagai kesempatan untuk memperkuat kemitraannya dengan guru dengan anak-anak. Uh, dengan keluarga anak-anak uh, dan para pengasuh untuk supaya bisa menjawab tantangan ini dan mengintegrasikan konteks kehidupan anak-anak ini sesuai dengan kebutuhan perkembangan. Oke, okay, next please. Oke, okay. distance learning ya. Uh, in essence, uh, Today, uh, for the pandemic, there are three models of distant learnings that can be done during this pandemic, namely offline learning, online learning, and flip learning. Yeah? Offline learning is distant learning model where the teacher directly submit uh, a learning plan to the parents, then takes the assessment through a home visit. So, uh, It will be for parents that uh, not cannot access uh, in online learning, and then online learning for the second is distance learning model in which teacher submit a learning plan and implements a learning program through the internet platform. It can be both synchronous or real time learning or asynchronous. Asynchronous is opposite of real-time learning, ya. Yeah. Whereas flipped classroom is learning model where children are given activities first, then discuss. Uh, the teacher give activities first for uh, for children, and then discuss in online platform by teacher through uh, something like a conference. Uh, apa conference uh, application something like that and then next slide uh, how when teacher use distance learning maybe uh, previously allow me to be okay when children uh, when teacher use uh, distance learning model there are Uh, some in this okay okay if the teacher organize learning online the teacher need to pay attention to the following points something like can you read uh, of this slide okay few children as learners in all moments and environments So uh, we can we have to view uh, or see the children as learners, gitu ya, uh, and engage young, young children to co-designer in online delivery, delivery platform, embracing their capabilities and skill having been born into the era digital technologies. It means kita harus memandang anak-anak dengan sebagai seorang pembelajar di mana mereka lahir uh, di masa-masa digital gitu ya di era digital sehingga mereka tentu memiliki uh, kapabilitas gitu ya yang walaupun sedikit 
uh, tentang apa itu dunia digital. Kita harus mem- memanfaatkan itu sehingga mereka kemudian bisa uh, engage gitu ya, bisa terlibat secara aktif dengan kegiatan pembelajaran yang kita lakukan. And then draw the on the expertise and well advanced online or distance learning strategies 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 teachers in uh, rural maybe and when kita, uh, ketika kita tidak bisa uh, ini ya kita perlu memperhatikan kalau ada siswa yang tidak bisa mengakses pembelajaran secara online kita perlu memperhatikan cara-cara lain yang uh, memungkinkan gitu oke okay, next uh, the next principle is We have to model a calm and caring approach to children and their family, then their families' individual contact and needs to provide a stable influence and support emotional well-being. It means kita harus mencontohkan bagaimana uh, bersikap tenang dan peduli terhadap konteks kehidupan anak dan kebutuhan belajar mereka sehingga itu kemudian dapat ditiru oleh keluarganya gitu ya dalam memperlakukan anak. Uh, next principle is avoid trying to exactly replicate the face-to-face learning experience directly to online learning platform. Artinya kita tidak perlu mencoba untuk mereplikasi gitu ya, menyamakan bahwa online learning harus sama dengan uh, offline learning gitu ya. Tentu kita harus membuat penyesuaian-penyesuaian. The next principle apply to inclusive practice to ensure all children have access to learning and are actively engaged in learning. Kita perlu menerapkan praktik inklusif untuk memastikan semua anak bisa engage, bisa asik gitu ya dengan pembelajarannya. And the last one is educate young learner and their families and Uh, carers on us e-safety that is remaining safe online. Kita perlu uh, menyampaikan kepada keluarga untuk terus menjaga keamanan dalam pembelajaran online ya. Kita tahu pembelajaran online punya ancamannya tersendiri sehingga kita perlu memastikan semua pihak baik orang tua maupun anak paham tentang bagaimana menjaga keamanan di dunia maya. Oke, okay, thank you. Uh, for the next, please. Oke, okay. how to plan learning experience during a pandemic? Oke, okay. to plan learning experiences for children, there are several things that need to be considered by the teacher Uh, namely as follows okay for the first lowering the standard of developmental achievement it mean kita sebagai guru harus uh, tidak boleh terlalu ini ya uh, kaku untuk mencapai kurikulum gitu ya kita perlu menurunkan standar capaian perkembangan anak jadi tidak memaksa gitu and then paying attention and adjusting the condition of parents. We need to kita perlu memperhatikan bagaimana kondisi orang tua. And the third one, plan activities according to characteristic of the age, abilities and needs of each child. Kita perlu merencanakan kegiatan yang sesuai dengan karakteristik anak, usia dan kemampuan serta kebutuhan mereka. Uh, court, uh, the next one, contents play activities that provide a meaningful learning experience. Kita perlu membuat uh, aktivitas bermain yang itu sangat bermakna bagi anak dan memberikan pengalaman belajar. Does not require completeness of development achievement, something like I say before. Kita tidak perlu menuntut anak untuk tuntas dalam belajar karena kita tahu situasinya tidak seoptimal ketika berada di sekolah. And then we have to plan various activities supaya anak-anak tidak bosan. Jadi aktivitasnya harus bermacam-macam. And the last one, focus and on habituating of life skill. 
orang tua perlu atau guru perlu merencanakan kegiatan yang bisa memfokuskan anak pada life skill mereka. Oke, okay, next. Oke, okay, when teacher uh, make a plan learning experience, plan of learning experience, uh, teacher need to consider uh, about it, yeah? something like natural resources. It means uh, we can... use all of things that uh, in their home to be resource of learning and then how to how to uh, maintaining relationship and belongingness for children something like teacher can uh, making what is uh, google uh, make it zoom or google meeting for provide opportunities of whole of class or all of teacher get interaction and uh, to each other to peers their peers yeah is uh, social connectivity is important during the period of social isolation we know that in pandemic uh, children always stay at home okay. so uh, it's important for them to uh, continue to maintaining their relationship and sense of belonging of their uh, peers and their teachers yeah and uh, the third one is how to building effective partnership working in partnership has never been more important than during this COVID-19 period with teachers uh, professionals parents and cares uh, being responsive and empathetic to the diversity and individual context. Okay, next slide. Okay. When planning the learning experience is model, as made, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, in this slide, you can read that learning experience plan should be made by the teacher every week submitted and coordinated with parents every beginning of weeks uh, of the weeks and in one weekly plan a lesson plan has been arranged for the next seven days jadi ketika membuat pembelajaran datnya diberikan seminggu sekali saja di mana setiap uh, rencana rencana pembelajaran atau rencana kegiatan dapat diberikan oleh guru di awal Uh, ini ya di awal pekan ya sehingga dalam tujuh hari sudah siap apa saja orang tua sudah tahu apa saja yang harus dikerjakan atau uh, pembelajaran apa yang perlu diberikan kepada anak selama sepekan ke depan oke okay. next slide Well, Miss Yani, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you a little bit. Okay. Okay, you only have uh, seven minutes remaining, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I will faster. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. Great, thank okay, you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is an example of a week-long learning experiences that can be used uh, as guide for parents in assisting children to learn from home. And the next slide. As for the role parents at home as mentors of children learning is also not easy. Parents need to develop the following even so that children can learn the developmentally uh, following ways. Yeah, 
so the children can learn the develop optimally. For in this slide, you can read that for the first plan a routine together, and then what is okay? Oops. Okay, plan routine together. Have open conversation. Take your time. It means you have effectively uh, learning time for children. And then protect children online. And stay in touch with your children education facility to uh, maintain your quality of assisting children in learning at home. Okay, this is the uh, final part of this in next okay best practice i'm not uh this is best practice from mc foreman a preschool teacher and team leader at american international school of guangzhou china uh, she uses online learning with the flip method for teaching every week uh, every week, Amy submit a weekly activity plan to her parents and meet with her stud students online with a video call. Uh, I share to you, I hope it can be useful to inspiring all of teachers and parents there to promote or to assist uh, children learning in home. Okay, that is, uh, I think, my material from me. See you at Q&A session. Thank you, Miss. I see you. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very positive. Thank you so much, Miss Yani. And um, I hope that you can uh, gather all of the information. But Miss Yani have already talked in a little bit in Bahasa Indonesia, so I will not uh, tell you uh, directly in Bahasa Indonesia, but we will discuss it later on, yeah? Well, today, okay, now we can jump into the next keynote speaker. We are connecting to Miss Anwar Saleh. Hello, Miss Anwar, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Okay, hello, Alhamdulillah. Great. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Miss Delphi. Good morning, Miss Anwar. Oh, well, yeah. okay. Again, as usual, I will introduce yourself first, actually. Okay. Miss Anwar Saleh, actually, she came from Jordania and she has a master's degree from Jadara University, if I'm not mistaken, in the field of measurement and evaluation. And now, she is a PhD candidate in the Universitas Technology Malaysia or UTM. She's going to be sharing to us about evaluation of primary school children's ability to continue their education. Well, are you ready about your presentation yeah. slide? Okay. Yes, yeah, of Great. course. <laughs> okay, thank you. And okay, now it's your turn, Miss Anwar. Okay, thank you so much. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I will thank Dr. Eva for this invitation. To be honest, I'm so glad to be a part uh, of these sessions. And I will thank the Dean of Faculty of Social Science uh, and the Humanities, Faculty of Education, so thank you for all your efforts and I will I, I will try to help you to share my experiences and uh, my knowledge with you in this session. Uh, so because we don't have long time, just specific time, I will try to cover and give you overview about my topic. So let's start in the first slide. Dr. Eva, hello. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's my slide? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
My, the title of my topic is the evaluation of primary school children's ability to continue their education during COVID-19. So when you start in the uh, address or the title, uh, this means we want to cover or give you some, some definition for this evaluation, especially for primary school children and what's the ability to these students to continue their education during the situation COVID-19. So I hope can cover every details about this topic exactly. So please, the next slide. Okay, now we want to start about the contents. What so the contents for this topic or the contents for this session. I will give you the guidance, help primary school children to continue their education during COVID-19. How we can help these students, how we can help our parents, our children. And the second one, we want to talk about using digital device because we know now this, this age is the uh, technology. So we, we must know how we can use this digital device. And we want to talk about reducing screen time because really it's very important issue. Oh, what's the ways to help children with learning? And uh, so uh, also we cover overview for assessment and evaluation. What's the difference between assessment and evaluation? What's the definition exactly for evaluation? and for assessment. Uh, we want to talk about evaluating the students online, how we can evaluate my students, and method for assessment, also results of evaluating. When I talk about results of evaluating, let's say that I want to take a sample for some of the students. Those students, when uh, uh, after I the, the evaluating for them, um, what's the expect or expectation for these uh, results? Uh, also, I will give you recommendation as a conclusion for this topic. So let's, uh, uh, next uh, slide, please. Hello, yes. <laughs> the guidance for this topic, I will give you the guidance to understand what I want to explain in a follow slide. So while staying at home due to COVID-19, the parents and cares may be concerned about their children's education and the effect of missing school, because this is very important now for, for everyone, for, for teachers, for children, for students to pursue and to complete their educational uh, process and education system. So about this, we will follow, and no one expects parents to act as a teacher. This really, of course, because the uh, the teachers uh, um, before COVID nineteen uh, was or were responsible for about all the educational system, but now it's different. Parents and care should be their best to help children and support their learning. We know that. Speak to your school, which will be planning work for your child to do. This point, it means we must do collaborate between schools and teachers or between schools and children because this is very important for them. Alongside any work your child receives from school, try using these online educational resources because if you use these uh, educational resources, this will help us, this will help the, our children and our students. Also, we want to talk about educational program to help primary school children, how we can they learn at home because no school uh, now because this situation because COVID-19. So the next slide, please. Yes, the first one I want to start in structuring the day. How I can structure the day with my parents, with my students at home without school. Don't worry about trying to keep your child to the full routine they had at school. 
However, children will feel more comfortable and learn better with a predictable routine to the day, even if this is difficult. I will read, then I will explain after that. This point, it means we must avoid any routines between the students and between the children at the same time to kill the routine and any boring between them because they must keep on their motivation and encouragement and support them. So this will be benefit for them to avoid these things. Also, when school provides your child with work, they may give you advice on how to structure the day. We must be like a guide for our children, for our students, because this will be support for them. Uh, how I can structure this? By get up and go to bed, uh, uh, to bed at the same time each day have regular meal times, have regular breaks, and make time to be active children. Wait, hello? Okay. Yes, yeah? maybe yes. you can repeat it again. Oh, okay. A little bit, a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Don't worry. I'm just I I talk that I organize my slide to understand everything. Just when you see, just uh, uh, sharply look, you you can understand everything. Inshallah. So this is about structure in the day. The next slide, please. Yes, the second one, the second strategy, maybe you can using digital devices. Like I mentioned before, how we can use this digital, what's the important for this? Your child's schools may set them work to do on a digital device. Yes, this is very important, like a laptop, like a tablet, like a smartphone. But at the same time, I will give you some, um, some points about this topic because Really, until now, we have a lot of poor countries. They don't have a lot of digital devices or they don't have facilities to use this uh, uh, digital device. So I will mention in the next slides how we can deal with the, uh, these students, with those countries, because uh, they, they have a lot of challenges uh, during COVID-19. So we, we can learn our, chi our children and our uh, parents, the students, how we can use the digital device. I, uh, at the same time, what's the benefits for this digital device? Sit age appropriate parental controls on any devices your child uses and supervise their use of websites and application. Like I mentioned before, see advice on keeping them safe online and talk to your child about online safety. This is very important point to stay staying safe online. I will explain it deeply in the next uh, in the next next uh, slide how we can keep uh, our children to be stay safe online. So next slide. Next slide, please, Dr. Eva. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what I mean, reducing screen time. When I say reducing screen time, this means digital devices are not the only way to learn. Yes, we have a lot of or varieties of things we can learn from them. You, we must manage screen time with a timer and the break up screen time by getting your child. For example, they can use using box or writing by hand or writing theory. This is what we mean exactly. In this, we must damage uh, by, uh, or share by manual learning and uh, online learning when you, we use digital device because we know uh, when we want to use this, we must care about limit the time for your children, for your kids to uh, avoid uh, spend long time for them. At the same time, when we mean reducing screen time, we must schedule the child's screen timer because we know that they have a lot of side effects for these digital devices, um, like some of mental health problem, anxiety, depression, stress. 
this will be affect on them or impact of them. So we must care about this issue. So next slide. Okay, now I will give you or mention some best way to help children in two aged, the age between four or two, seven and seven from 11, because we have different between these ages. <laughs> Absolutely, you know that. So how, or what's the best way to help children in age four to seven? Sit with them as they were. We must collaborate with our children, with our students, and, and to pursue or to finish the educational system. Uh, at the same time, do active or practical things with them, like I mentioned before about collaborate with our students or our children. Try to break down the work into shorter periods, like I mentioned also in the previous slides, to kill any routine or, and to avoid any boring between them. They must be motivated persons. Take frequent breaks, this will give them Mm, relax, it will give them some, mm, some like some motivation or, or, or like this. Uh, at the same time, this is most um, significant points. I think yeah, from my view, prize or reward them or do anything well. Uh, for example, maybe we can tell uh, your parents or your uh, children, if you do this, I will give you this, or maybe prepare some presents for them. This will give them motivation uh, to complete their uh, duties and homework. Uh, at, at, this, at the same time, they'll, this will give them uh, or give them improve their skills and their uh, qualification. At the same time, reading and talking with them is very important. For the age 7 to 11, we must give them support and direction. But at the same time, we must take care about uh, to be an independent person or independently person. When I mean 7 to 11 age, this means I must teach them how they can cope with the situation or best situation or difficult situation alone. Just I can guide for them, but at the same time to be independent. I uh, Because the parents they, they don't, uh, don't stay always with, the, with their children or with their parents. So this is very important for them. The second one, try to break down the work into short periods based on how long they can concentrate because this will uh, increase their concentrate or their focus. This will be help for them. Okay, the next slide. Yes, this slide talk about the distance learning. Uh, I will explain something here also. As schools around the world have closed due to COVID-19, unfortunately, many have extended clauses for the reminder to or for school year students, teachers, parents, and settling into the new reality for foreseeable future. What we can say about this? Under these unexpected circumstances, because when COVID-19 started, this will be, uh, this will happen uh, unexpected. So what we must do in this case, what we can do and how we can cope with the situation. Now we just, uh, um, transfer for distance learning. So when we say distance learning, we mean connecting students and teachers through online platforms. What's the platform that can we use it? This is, uh, we have now a lot of platforms we can use it to uh, distance learning between students and children and teachers. Also at the same time, national and local government are partnering with broadcasting service provide to deliver educational content via television and radio. Here, I will give you a big example or a huge example about my country. To be honest, my country in Jordan, they cope with COVID-19 in a good way because they support their children by broadcasting by some channels uh, and television because you know, 
some of families or some of students, they don't have facilities to uh, complete their educational system or educa uh, educational process. So via channels that uh, uh, it will be special for some materials like maths, Arabic, English, Islamic studies like this, this will help them a lot. So this was just, for example, from my country, how they cope with the situation. Okay, the next slide. Okay. Well, I, I talked in the first, my title about evaluation and assessments, what is the difference between them. Now I will cover something. So when we talk about the assessments, what's the meaning for assessment? What's the meaning of evaluation? Evaluation is described as an act of passing of judgment. When we talk about evaluation, always directly, you must relate them in judgment. But when we talk about the assessment, it's merely the process of collecting, reviewing, and using the data for the purpose of improvement in the current performance. About the nature of assessment, it's diagnostic about the evaluation and it's a judgmental. What it does for assessment, provide feedback. When we see feedback, we mean the positive points and negative points together. About evaluation, we must determine the extent to which objective are achieved. What is the purpose for assessment and for evaluation formative summative? I will let you to take, uh, just uh, focus with me about formative assessment because I will explain a lot of information about this kind of assessment exactly or especially because I will uh, tell you why. Also, we have orientation, we have goal for assessment process. Uh, oriented for evaluation and product oriented feedback. I will tell you also be before about positive and negative points for evaluation based on the level of equality. When we see quality, we mean value, not just the quantity, how many or how much. We focus on equality more than quantity and, uh, and evaluation. What about the relationship between parties? Reflective for assessment and perspective for evaluation. And to be honest, I prepared also extra information about this topic to understand deeply. But because I don't have long time, just a specific time, now I will give you an overview. Then later I will give you or share in chat some, some extra information about this topic. Criteria for assessment set by both and parties jointly for evaluation set by the evaluator. What about the measurement standard? Absolute for assessment, comparative for evaluation. Also, I uh, I explained this in, in uh, next slide about absolute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please unmute Misri Suharnik. Misri Suharnik. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anwar, can you unmute? I'm sorry, all of the participants, please unmute your voice, except our keynote speakers. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So on the next <laughs> okay, it's okay. Just make it easy. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Okay, just just a break. This is a break. Okay, so that's a, next uh, slide. Okay, that's a break. Ice breaking, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. This is a break. <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, just a little bit, because lots of the technical, uh, yeah, it's technical issue here.
well, well, well. Okay, Dr. Eva, next slide, please. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, Anwar. No, 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 don't worry. This is a good break for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just take it as a good break. <laughs> yeah. So now we, we, we want to talk about types of assessment and types of evaluation, because also very important. Summative assessment, interim assessment, formative assessment. Just we can read uh, these tips, you can understand what I mean, summative, interim, formative. For summative, end of year assessment, state assessment aligned to content area state standards and measures students component of teacher accountability and evaluation. The second one is interim assessment. This will happen from six to eight week assessment, school and district level assessment. It identify gaps in students, predict the students' performance and that are used at classroom level, drives district level decision. And I will focus on formative assessment like uh, I told you before, why I want to focus on this type of assessment because actually it is common between all teachers and educators to use formative assessment if they want to uh, evaluate their children or students or teachers, anyone. Why? Because really it's a daily assessment. When we, when, uh, we say daily assessment, I mean not just um, um, weekly or monthly or yearly. When you want to evaluate someone daily, this means we, um, we want to uh, stay with, with her or with him step by step daily. This will be uh, help you to take feedback, what's the positive points, what the negative points, what the obstacles, what's the challenge. That's why uh, uh, I want to take formative assessment to talk about them and uh, for in my, in my view or my experience, I advise uh, uh, anyone they want to evaluate some, someone to use this kind of assessment. Also about formative assessment linked uh, to learning. Uh, assessment student, our us student, understanding the measurement skills that are used to modify. So about the types of evaluation we can use based on time or based on manner. This depends on you if you want to choose time or you, if you want to choose manner. For time, formative, summative, for manner, criteria, reference, and nor reference. Okay, so the next slide, please. Okay. In this, in this slide, we want to explain about how we can evaluate the students online because we know when when we evaluating my students in COVID-19. This was different before COVID-19. I was a teacher before two years because now I'm PhD students. <laughs> so I leave my way. So, but I have a lot of uh, experience about how I can evaluate my students. So now this is different because we want to evaluate students online. We have three techniques, students' presentation, exams, assignment. For students' presentation, we must focus on asynchronously and synchronously. What's different between them? Also, I will explain exactly in the next slide. For asynchronously, we can use web camera, microphone, screen sharing, and slides the screen. For synchronously, Google Meet, it will be enough like this. But the second one is assignment. You know, everyone you know was the assignment because I think <laughs> I think most of us we have assignments and exam in in, the, uh, in schools and universities in college like you know, in college like this. So for assessment, we can use PDF and Word. For exam, I think it will be enough. No, no need to no need to <laughs> explain about this uh, point. Yes. Also, the next slide, please. Okay, this is most important question to ask us. Everyone must ask this question. Are students still learning during COVID-19? Yes. 
So what we can say about this question or what we can answer about this, the formative assessment can provide the answer. And I explained before, I mentioned uh, previous why formative assessment can provide the answer because it's daily assessment. This will be provide us in a lot of benefits for, for teachers, for students and parents. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, what about the method of assessment before COVID-19? And what about the method of assessment during COVID-19? Before everyone know how we can evaluate our students or teachers or parents, anyone, like exam, homework, observations by teacher, continual feedback. This was manually, but now it's different because we have a, we have difficult situation, we have a private situation, it's COVID-19. During COVID-19, we can assessment our, our children, our students by a synchronous form and synchronous form. Like I told you before, I will explain what's the asynchronous and what's the asynchronous. The asynchronous is separated by both space and time, not at the same time, but synchronous form, it means at the same time for space or time, same. So the first one talks about separated, we mean like we can use Google Classroom, Moodle, and WhatsApp, Messenger, some platforms. But for at the same time, this is like live meeting by Zoom, like us, we, we are meeting by Zoom. At the same time, direct by phone, Microsoft Teams, and notes. This is what is the difference between the assessment before COVID and the during COVID. Okay, next slide. This is the last slide for me. Uh, I told you I will give you a explain or uh, uh, I just imagination. If you want to take sample for some students or, or some, some children, this sample, will, we will take it from population, you know that. After I evaluating my students, what's the expected results from this uh, process? The, we have two charts in this slide. What I mean in the first one and the next one, I will give you an uh, explanation about them. The two figures below show projected math and reading. We, we, we talk to two materials to talk about them. Math, reading. Learning better from the beginning of 2019 to 20 and before COVID. So what really, what's happened in this period exactly before COVID-19 and during COVID-19? If you can see from September to middle of March, this was before COVID-19. And from middle of March until, uh, I don't know, <laughs> inshallah, everything will be okay yeah, soon. I mean, I mean, yeah, Rob, I mean, what happened in the uh, students' achievement? Really, so this is so bad to tell you that the, the, the situation is very bad for our students and affect a lot of, of our students. So if you can see the solid line represent average trajectories in a typical year with a typical growth estimated based on a prior year's data, followed by normal patterns of learning loss over this summer. You know, loss over this summer because this was during COVID-19. Generally, students' achieve, achievement, this, was, uh, this is very important for our children, for our students. Uh, learning tends to this line. This line, I mean, decrease, not increase, not in good, not in stable. So the, the, the situation is very, very bad. During the summer, through this various created by students. But at the same time, this is just a, a expected 
results or expected outcomes. But maybe, and on the other hand, maybe they, uh, I'm sure we have some countries, they still try to, uh, to present uh, or to improve uh, their students to be unstable in their achievement or to I, I cannot I cannot say uh, increase because really it's very difficult but if it's stable it's okay I mean balance between the students achievement and the situation now COVID-19 or, or maybe like I explain loss in students achievement so the next slide Hello, yeah, this is recommendation about this topic, what I want to say. You know, COVID-19 changed everything, especially in educational process, educational system. But at the same time, we try to be in, in a safe site because we want to always improve our children and our students to be stable in their achievement because now we are in or during COVID-19 but after that inshallah everything will be okay they so they will come back to their schools so I'm sure the, the there are a lot of uh, different uh, this, uh, it will be effect on my our students before COVID-19 and during COVID-19. What we must say in this case, even though in many places, it's certainly not possible for teachers and students to come together. Yes, unfortunately, at the same space. But it's necessary for teaching and learning to continue. Yes, uh, we must share in this process. Everyone in this society must share their experience, their skills with our children, with our students to, to stay safe, to avoid learning loss and to stay on track on our goal in decreasing learning poverty, like I mentioned before, to decreasing, not increasing learning poverty. Uh, so also I'm sure Formative assessment can help all students to continue along their learning trajectory, providing them, their parents, their teachers with the necessary information to support the learning process, albeit from a distance, because we cannot meet them face to face in the same place in the same time. So just we can complete this process in any way. I hope I can give my my experience and uh, you can uh, understand everything because this was uh, I think uh, easy it's easy way to understand all the points about this topic and I will share also uh, extra information uh, I told you uh, if, if I have time I, I can explain now if you don't have time, just I will I will share with you. Huh? Miss Selfie, are you with me? Hello. Yeah? Okay, hello, yeah. Actually, okay, your time is <laughs> out. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, thank but you. But maybe we can, uh, maybe you can show us in the discussion okay. or just yeah, okay. in Q&A okay. session. Sure, sure. Thank okay. you for your listening. Uh, thank you so much for everything. I hope I can yeah. see you in the next session, inshallah. Uh, stay safe and pray for, for me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Great. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you again for sharing with us, Miss okay. Anwar. That was awesome and very positive. Um, Bapak Ibu, hal yang sudah disharingkan tadi banyak sekali, seperti yang sudah dibagikan di slide-nya Bapak Ibu, termasuk uh, ekspektasi awal yang memang kita karena semua sih sudah berubah dengan covid Um, sebelumnya tidak ada online, kemudian tiba-tiba ada online, termasuk um, banyak hal, termasuk ad, hal yang di, harus diperhatikan adalah online safety, di mana Bapak Ibu memang harus ada time screen-nya ya, jadi ibaratnya anak itu nggak terus-terusan nonton HP atau um, laptop gitu ya, nah ini ada banyak cara, termasuk tadi juga uh, 
uh, berhubung background beliau itu ada di uh, pengukuran dan juga evaluasi memang sudah disajikan di slide-nya memang slide-nya yang sudah dijelaskan tadi termasuk um, uh, kita kalau dulu memang ibaratnya tetap muka kemudian pakai uh, pensil and paper test nah kalau sekarang ya evaluasinya Bapak Ibu bisa pakai yang kemarin itu rame ya misalnya pakai ke Google Form ya untuk meng mengevaluasi siswa kemudian ada kuisis ada kahut macam-macam pokoknya intinya hal-hal uh, yang berbau online gitu oke okay? termasuk asinkronus dan sinkronusnya itu juga sudah dijelaskan dan tadi ada line atau grafik yang sudah uh, disajikan Memang ada kecenderungan untuk menurun, tapi harapannya kita pandemi ini segera berakhir. Sama seperti um, semua orang bahwa uh, harapannya anak-anak bisa kembali bersekolah lagi, sehingga uh, pelaksanaan pembelajaran dan juga penilaian atau asesmen itu bisa berjalan dengan optimal. Gitu, okay? uh, well, okay, thank you again for Miss Anwar. Now I would like to invite our third case speaker uh, in our line. Mr. Yuda, hello. Uh, please unmute yourself, Mr. Yuda. Hello. Okay, hello. great. Can you hear me? Yes. A little bit okay. uh, unclear. Maybe you can okay. yes use your earphone or speaker a little bit. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Clear? Okay. It's it is clear right now. Okay. I would like uh, to introduce Mr. Yuda first. He's an vice director of Sangar Corp and he has received various teaching backgrounds as a primary and secondary teacher in Malang since 2008 and also taught in Universitas Islam Negeri Malang as a lecturer in 2010 but now he is focused on the Sanggar Corp as a vice director now he will talk about authentic assessment of early childhood development in the COVID era well maybe it's your turn, I guess, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, Miss Shirley. Uh, uh, di sini saya akan menjelaskan menggunakan dua bahasa ya. Jadi, uh, I will explain with uh, bilingual. The title of uh, my presentation is Authentic Assessment of Early Childhood Development in the COVID Era. Jadi, di sini saya akan uh, memfokuskan khusus ya lebih spesifik ke penilaian otentik pada perkembangan anak usia dini. Jadi penilaian otentik itu apa, penilaian yang betul untuk era COVID itu seperti apa, nanti kita akan bandingkan dengan era normal, kan begitu ya. Jadi langsung saja ke slide yang pertama. The first slide, I will discuss, I will explain about what is assessment. Apa sih penilaian itu untuk anak usia dini itu, fokusnya di mana dan bagaimana kita akan menilai jadi apa yang dinilai dan bagaimana kita menilainya di sini ada dua ada dua aktivitas yang pertama adalah penilaian proses atau proses assignment jadi yang pertama adalah proses yang kedua adalah result atau hasilnya jadi hasil dari hasil capaian perkembangan di sini kita fokus ke capaian perkembangan jadi penilaian untuk anak usia sendiri usia dini sendiri terbagi menjadi dua yaitu proses dan hasil. Nah di sini yang dinilai adalah pemenuhan standar tingkat capaian perkembangan atau fulfillment achievement level standard development. Ini sudah di Undang-Undang 137 di Permen Permendikbud sudah dijelaskan. Nah di sini ada enam aspek atau enam enam aspek yang six aspek yang harus dinilai. Di antaranya yaitu Pertama, religious and moral value. Ya, ini nilai agama dan moral. Second, fisik and motorik. Fisik and motorik. Dan ini uh, sudah kita pahami sebagai guru TK atau guru PAUD, kita sudah paham bahwa ada enam. Uh, cognitive, language, social, emotional, and uh, creativity. Nah, di sini uh, kalau di luar negeri mungkin hanya ada empat, yaitu uh, fisik sampai sosial, sedangkan creativity dan religius tidak dinilai, tapi untuk Indonesia dan Malaysia memiliki persamaan yaitu enam aspek yang dinilai karena kita negara yang lebih religius ya istilahnya ada perketuhanan nah, selanjutnya nah di sini ada prinsip 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 of assessment in early childhood jadi di sini ada ada banyak sebetulnya ada sekitar delapan tapi saya akan menjelaskan lima yang pertama educate atau edukatif 
prinsip edukatif, autentik, objektif, countable dan transparan. Jadi di sini ada lima prinsip. Apa saja prinsip itu dan uh, penjelasannya seperti apa? Ini yang pertama edukatif. Uh, encouraging children process uh, progress toward development through meaningful education activity. Jadi di sini prinsip edukatif uh, edukatif itu uh, intinya adalah uh, menilai menilai perkembangan anak melalui aktivitas yang mendidik yang bermakna. Jadi uh, lebih fokus ke hal tersebut ya. Yang kedua, authentic. Authentic associate with real condition during play activity we learn is carried out uh, continuously. Jadi di sini uh, penilaian autentik itu berhubungan dengan kondisi nyata. Kondisi nyata itu apa ya? Uh, pada saat dilakukan pada saat proses pembelajaran kan gitu ya. Jadi Uh, tidak boleh terpisah atau segala macamnya jadi uh, lebih ke uh, langsung kemudian objektif Objek, objektif appropriate the indicator of development assessment and uh, di sini lebih ke subjektivitas subjektivitas itu apa jadi penilaiannya itu harus objektif tidak boleh subjektif tidak, tidak boleh karena kita senang pada satu anak nilainya bagus nah itu adalah prinsip objektivitas kemudian accountable Have a procedure and clear criteria set out and planned in early learning. Jadi memang kita harus accountable itu harus harus sudah jelas prosedurnya, kriterianya sudah jelas. Jadi di indikatornya sudah jelas, KD-nya sudah jelas, RPPH-nya sudah dirancang dan bukan penilaian itu bukan sifatnya ujuk-ujuk menilai atau tiba-tiba menilai enggak, tapi lebih ke uh, awalnya sudah disediakan atau sudah di prepare gitu ya. Kemudian transparan. Transparan ini berkaitan dengan the result of the assessment can be accessed by all stakeholder, especially the parent ya. Jadi di sini uh, hasil penilaian mem uh, memang harus disampaikan apa adanya disampaikan kepada orang tua sebagai bahan evalu evaluasi bersama. Jadi ketika anak ada masalah, ketika dinilai ada perkembangan yang mungkin terlalu lambat dan sekolah sudah maksimal, maka itu harus disampaikan kepada orang tua. Supaya apa? Supaya orang tua bisa memberikan uh, istilahnya uh, perlakuan khusus. Sudah ada perbaikan gitu ya. Uh, selanjutnya, nah ini kita akan membandingkan comparison of early, uh, early childhood education assessment before and after COVID atau during COVID. Di sini per, uh, perbandingan aktivitas penilaian sebelum dan selama atau sesudah COVID. Nah, di sini ada pelaksana. Siapa sih yang menilai? Kemudian bagaimana prosesnya? Instrumennya apa saja? Nah kita kita akan pastikan bahwa memang dari pemerintah belum ada yang yang membahas kurikulum khusus untuk penilaian belum ada panduan secara resmi. Namun di sini saya pastikan bahwa sekolah-sekolah sudah kreatif. Nah di sini saya akan mensistematiskan saja nanti sebagai bahan referensi untuk Uh, istilahnya pengambilan kebijakan dalam membuat uh, penilaian seperti itu ya. Jadi pertama berkaitan dengan aktor. Siapa yang menilai? Kalau sebelum uh, aktor of assessment. Jadi sini sebelum COVID, uh, before COVID, guru sendiri, independen, mandiri yang dilakukan ini sudah diatur di Permendikbud. Jadi Permendikbud sudah mengatur bahwa yang menilai dari A sampai Z, dari perencanaan sampai pelaporan, yang melakukan adalah guru, tidak dibantu oleh orang tua. Nah, ini during COVID atau after COVID, setelah COVID, gimana? Maka saya mengutip Morrison bahwa di sini adalah evaluasinya harus kooperatif dan kolaboratif. Artinya apa? Harus ada kerjasama antara guru dan orang tua. Nah, masing-masing punya peran. Perannya di mana? Nah, di sini kita akan membahas. Uh, function of implementation assessment after COVID. Jadi ini tugas dan fungsi pelaksana penilai. Jadi orang yang menilai, siapa yang menilai setelah COVID. Nah di sini teacher atau guru fungsinya pertama plan, implementation, management, archiving, and reporting. Jadi di sini ada satu, dua, tiga, five, ada lima fungsi dari guru dalam uh, penilaian. Mulai dari perencanaan, pelaksanaan, pengelola, pengolahan, pengarsipan, sampai pelaporan. Ini uh, pada saat COVID maupun setelah COVID sama ya intinya uh, fungsinya sama. Yang berbeda pada saat COVID adalah di orang tua. Nah dari orang tua ini uh, pelaksana. Uh, 
Nah, pelaksana ini implementasinya seperti apa, pelaksanaan seperti apa, fungsinya orang tua dan guru dalam saat uh, pada saat uh, COVID seperti apa kita akan bahas satu per satu. Oke, okay. ini uh, perencanaan, plan of assessment. Jadi kita perencanaan, perencanaan full ini harus dari guru ya. Pertama, determine basic com uh, competence and formulate activities. Jadi di sini kita menentukan kompetensi dasar. Indikator KIKD-nya harus sudah dirumuskan nanti di ada mulai dari prota, promes, RPPH, laporan bulanan itu sudah memang harus sebelum pemelaksanaan pembelajaran memang sudah TKTK sudah menyiapkan. Nah itu sudah antara waktunya alat kriterianya yang dipakai entah itu menggunakan catatan anekdot harian, menggunakan hasil karya, interview itu sudah harus dipersiapkan di awal. Yang kedua menentukan waktu dan uh, waktu yang tepat nah, dan tempat yang terbaik. Ini apa ini? Supaya apa? Seluruh aspek perkembangan itu semuanya tercover, ternilai. Jadi kita harus benar-benar uh, uh, membagi untuk bulan ini aspek mana, bulan ini aspek mana, bulan ini. Sehingga selama satu semester seluruh aspek sudah dapat ternilai dengan baik. Oke, selanjutnya. Nah ini saya membagi ini ya saya membagi perbandingan di sini comparison of planning assessment jadi bagaimana peran seorang guru dan dan bagaimana pelaksanaannya selama proses pembelajaran proses penilaian maaf nah proses penilaian di sini ada ada beberapa hal yang harus saya bahas pertama berkaitan dengan aktivitasnya jadi aktivitas pembelajarannya seperti apa aktivitas penilaiannya seperti apa deskripsinya description nanti before after, before after covid apa yang harus kita lakukan dan keterangannya seperti apa jadi di sini pertama determine basic competence saya sudah bahas tadi ada tiga masing-masing pertama yang harus kita lakukan adalah develop RPPH and determine the aspect of development that will be assessed by STTPA. Jadi menyusun RPPH dan menetapkan dahulu aspek perkembangan yang dinilai melalui STTPA. Nah, di sini untuk uh, before after Covid harus memang harus dilaksanakan dua-duanya. Cuma ketika selama Covid lower and reduce the indicator being assessed. Jadi kita harus mengurangi. Jadi uh, seorang guru sekolah harus bisa memilah mana indikator yang bertumpuk mana indikator yang priority indikator who do access, uh, access jadi harus mana indikator yang harus diakses itu harus jelas jadi dikurangi sehingga orang tua tidak terlalu berat dan guru tidak terlalu berat dalam melakukan penilaian kedua yaitu menetapkan alat dan kriteria establish assessment tool and criteria jadi di sini dalam menentukan alat penilaian harus disesuaikan dengan indikator yang telah ditetapkan. Kemudian alat penilaian dibuat sesuai dengan aktivitas belajar di rumah. Selama COVID eh, harus alat penilaian itu harus tidak memberatkan orang tua dan guru, namun tetap mengacu pada indikator, eh, tetap mengacu pada indikator dan minimal indikator yang yang tidak terlalu penting dipilah-pilah sehingga bisa dilaksanakan secara komplit enam aspek semuanya masuk gitu ya. Kemudian menentukan waktu yang paling tepat. Jadi kalau selama sebelum COVID kita enak di sekolah punya waktu yang jelas, waktu yang enak. Tapi kalau di selama COVID, nah kita tidak punya. Jadi waktu yang tepat adalah fleksibel according to parent time and home activity that can be used with learning. Jadi istilahnya disesuaikan dengan aktivitas orang tua ya. Jadi orang tuanya kapan? Yang penting hari ini ada laporan atau mungkin hari ini nggak bisa laporan besok uh, di double laporannya. Kemudian dalam satu minggu dilaporkan secara uh, direk direkap secara bersama-sama. Oke, selanjutnya. Nah, di sini uh, ini alat ya uh, pelaksanaannya, pelaksanaannya apa saja? Nah, uh, I will uh, describe the The implementation of assessment ada lima interview observation formative assessment performance and uh, growth and uh, medical check atau medical record nah, di sini ada, ada kalau untuk anak usia dini ada ada medical record ya jadi medical recordnya apa saja nah, nanti kita akan bahas yang pertama ini yang wajib ya yang wajib selama itu ada 
ada observation. Nah, observation ini memang wajib. Dari note, ada catatan harian, ada anekdot, ada... Oke, okay, saya akan mempercepat ya. Ada artwork, artwork note, ada catatan hasil karya, kemudian interview, ada catatan percakapan, conversation note, ada formative assessment, kita punya tax assessment, ada performance, ada official performance, dan medical record. Nah, kita akan bahas satu-satu. Uh, comparison implementation of assessment di sini kita akan membandingkan bagaimana membuat daily note atau catatan harian sebelum dan setelah covid nah ini harus diperhatikan ya uh, bagi uh, para guru uh, PAUD atau TK tentang cara membuat daily note uh, pertama uh, daily note for teacher observed when children play jadi dilakukan memang uh, sebelum covid memang sama ya prinsipnya sebelum dan setelah covid intinya dilakukan ketika anak bermain kemudian disesuaikan dengan KD dan indikator adjust to KD and development indikator kemudian dilakukan bergilir diusahakan satu minggu satu subtema dan telah selesai seluruh anak dalam satu minggu jadi ini kelemahannya di Indonesia memang gurunya jumlahnya ada yang satu ada yang guru pendamping cuma kalau diusahakan nggak harus satu hari itu mengobservasi seluruh anak enggak tapi anak bergilir sehingga dalam satu minggu semua anak bisa diobservasi Uh, ini tidak berdasarkan asumsi, tidak berdasarkan uh, ketika menilai atau ketika kita mengisi catatan harian, tidak menggunakan kata-kata yang abstrak, seperti misalkan terlalu agresif, terlalu manja, atau segala macam. ya. Tulis nama dan usia anak, tanggal waktu yang tepat. Ini sebelum COVID. Jadi setelah COVID, uh, after COVID, perform by parent for the documentation piece. Jadi ini tugasnya orang tua. Tugasnya orang tua adalah melaksanakan dokumentasi. Dia tidak menilai, tapi melaksanakan. Melaksanakan penilaian. Melaksanakan bukan berarti dia menilai sampai memberikan skor atau memberikan uh, uh, checklist, enggak, atau mendescribe, enggak, tapi hanya uh, merekod. Uh, tugasnya adalah perform by parent for the documentation phase. Foto, video, during play activities dilakukan oleh orang tua untuk tahap dokumentasi. Penilaian untuk menentukan KD dan indikator tetap dilakukan oleh guru. The assessment to determine basic competence and indicator carried out by teacher in accordance with the video or photo sent by parents. Jadi sini uh, tetap uh, dilakukan penilaian tetap oleh guru. Tulis nama tetap ya. Rekap nilai dilakukan uh, selama satu minggu. Jadi nggak direkap harian karena nanti ada orang tua yang ngirimnya itu mungkin telat-telat dan segala macam itu sebetulnya perlu diingatkan tapi memang rekornya atau rekapnya dilakukan selama satu minggu ini contohnya ya ini contohnya bisa nanti kita akan share uh, the format uh, 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 example of daily note and other is no problem uh, I will skip next is anecdote atau disebut dengan catatan anekdot. Nah, catatan anekdot bedanya sama catatan harian apa? Kalau catatan anekdot eh, lebih ke insidental, sesuatu yang penting, sesuatu yang muncul secara tiba-tiba tapi itu bermakna. Untuk menilai apa? I'm to understand the child character, potensial, and problem. Jadi lebih ke bermakna yang eh, mencatat potensi permasalahan anak dan karakter anak. Nah, kita pengen tahu karakter anak atau anak ini punya bakat, punya potensi, tiba-tiba menggambar dan gambarnya sangat bagus dan dan segala macamnya atau dia melakukan kegiatan sosial yang tiba-tiba membantu seorang temannya dan segala macam, kita perlu rekod tuh. Kita perlu rekod dan masukkan ke catatan anekdot yang tidak di dimasukkan di catatan harian yang memang catatan harian sudah kita rencanakan kalau ini lebih ke dental atau tiba-tiba selama covid atau after covid atau during covid don't by parent by videoing the child potential and problem when learning jadi di sini uh, dilakukan oleh orang tua tetap orang tua pelaksana memvideo karena nggak mungkin guru datang ya memvideo potensi anak kira-kira orang tua harus tahu potensi anak saya di mana nih oh ternyata dia bener gambar oh gambarnya bagus oh dia nyanyi atau dia melakukan sesuatu yang di luar prediksi kita di luar uh, Uh, usianya, nah itu perlu kita rekod, kita kirim, kirim ke siapa? Kirim ke sekolah lah ya. Nah, atau dilakukan ketika ketika home visit. Nah ini uh, guru pasti home visit ya awal-awal, mungkin nanti dijadwalkan tiga bulan atau enam bulan melakukan home visit. 
pada saat home visit kita kita ini kita siapkan siapa tahu pada home saat home visit kita wawancara anak kita wawancara orang tua ada sesuatu yang menarik di situ nah kita siapkan nah ini catatan anekdot yaitu example of anecdotal nah, ini ada contohnya cara menulisnya nanti kita bagi file wordnya jadi jangan khawatir Kemudian ini setelah dicatat kita rekap masukkan ke indikator. Nah, masukkan ke indikator, masukkan ke KD, cocoknya mana ya yang telah saya catat tadi. Jadi kalau masukkan ke indikator untuk rekapnya nggak harus saat itu. Tapi kalau mencatat ya harus saat itu supaya nggak lupa. Oke, ini untuk catatan hasil karya. Catatan hasil karya ini note of at work, uh, write and describing the result of children work after carrying out activity can be in hand work, artwork or display of the child. Jadi di sini fokusnya ke pekerjaan pekerjaan yang seni ya, artwork atau karya. Entah itu nanti uh, uh, lukisan, entah itu nanti uh, bermain segala macam. Nah, itu uh, kita masukkan ke catatan karya atau uh, catatan hasil karya. Ini sudah sudah sudah, sudah sering jadi untuk pelaksanaan pembelajarannya tetap dalam satu minggu nanti ada ada catatan harian ada catatan karya jadi untuk RPPH nya dipastikan dalam satu minggu ada hasil karya yang dikumpulkan nanti orang tua akan mengirim parent community with children about that children do jadi di sini untuk memastikan apa yang dibuat oleh anak orang tua harus guru dan orang tua harus menjalin komunikasi ditanya anak Nak membuat apa? Apa yang kamu buat? Nah, idenya apa? Masukannya apa? Kenapa kamu membuat ini? Kamu senang ya? Kamu hobi ya? Kenapa? Nah, dan segala macam. Ini gambarnya tentang apa? Dan segala macam. Suruh cerita. Di situ nanti akan akan ada penilaian yang lebih komplit ya. Oke kita nanti bisa dibaca sendiri. Next, ini contohnya artwork ya. Contoh artwork uh, how to uh, assess of artwork. Nah. Kemudian interview, nah, kalau tadi kita sudah bahas observation, number two is interview. Interview uh, before COVID, the teacher do interview to get information about the child knowledge and understanding. Jadi kalau tadi observasi, observasi itu melihat, uh, melihat. Kalau interview berkomunikasi, mewawancarai. Nah, jadi interview itu mewawancarai. Nah interview, interview itu lebih ke melihat kalau anak pendiam anak itu uh, uh, sukar mengungkapkan ide kita maka kita akan pancing dengan interview ini siapa tahu sudah paham tapi dia uh, tidak tidak mau berkomunikasi dan segala macam maka tugas guru adalah melakukan interview interview selama covid uh, selama covid maka dilakukan oleh parent parent question and answer make question uh, with children Uh, the teacher tax uh, is, uh, is make interview conversation note from the video as related to children knowledge and understanding. Jadi sini tugas guru memang menilai dari hasil interview yang dilakukan oleh anak tersebut, uh, anak dan orang tua. Nah selanjutnya ini format interview ya. Jadi format interviewnya dapat dilihat. Bukan. Ini contoh format interviewnya. Webinar. Dan ada uh, libur. Uh, nah, number next implementation of assessment ini ke formatif assessment jadi penugasan fokus ke uh, penugasan kecuali kalau pendingnya I'm sorry Miss Mister Yuda oke okay, oke okay, no problem uh, formatif assessment uh, lebih fokus kepada apa ini lebih fokus ke project percobaan jadi penugasan tugas yang berupa Project can be project or an experience, uh, experiment. Jadi, for example, planting flower, making from play doh atau plastisin, like that ya. Jadi kita fokuskan kalau tadi daily activity lebih ke uh, apa uh, catatan sehari-hari, kemudian anekdot yang uh, yang suatu yang penting-penting saja yang bermakna berkaitan dengan karakter, potensi dan masalah. Kemudian art lebih ke seni yang dihasilkan. Kalau ini lebih ke project dan experience. Jadi lebih ke project dan experience. Tetap harus ada walaupun kita tidak memaksa untuk yang project ini. Karena project ini biasanya lebih ke grup. ya. Jadi project bersama. Walaupun bisa dibuat individu tapi lebih ke project bersama. Sehingga 
memungkinkan masih memungkinkan cuma nanti proyek individu ya tapi mungkin akan kerjasama dengan orang tua selama covid tapi kalaupun tidak dilakukan tidak apa-apa ini bisa di skip untuk penugasan yang bersifatnya proyek ya untuk untuk anak usia dini ya untuk TK nah, kemudian ini contohnya ya kalau selama pandemi selama sebelum covid kita bisa menanam dan segala macam nah, ini ada indikator tugasnya dan dan lain-lain dan ini unjuk kerja Unjuk kerja lebih ke mana? Performance, performance assessment, performance assessment fokus on penampilan. Jadi performance memang penampilan, yaitu menyanyi, olahraga, menari, bentuknya kelihatan, tampilannya anak-anak kelihatan. Harus ada, memang harus ada selama COVID pun harus ada untuk menampilkan bakat-bakat mereka dalam bentuk penampilan ya di sini per record performance activity. Jadi tugasnya orang adalah orang tua adalah merekam aktivitas guru tetap melakukan penilaian. Orang tua boleh nggak melakukan penilaian? Enggak boleh, nanti subjektif. Pasti hasilnya anaknya pinter semua, tugasnya bagus semua nah, kayak gitu ya. Itulah. Nah, ini contohnya ya, contohnya untuk performance. Ini kayaknya waktu saya sudah yeah. hampir habis. Lanjut. Eh uh, Uh, next is uh, growth and health check. Ini tetap harus uh, kalau tadi masalah perkembangan ini masalah pertumbuhan dan kesehatan, ya. Ini pertama measure the child growth such, such as weight, height and head uh, circumference. Di sini uh, kita jelaskan ukuran pertumbuhan seperti uh, berat badan, tinggi badan, lingkar kepala dan lain-lain ya. Catatan imunisasi ini di Posyandu sudah ada untuk anak usia dini pasti ada, ada catatannya. Kalau di pos jandu tidak ada, nanti di sekolah pasti ada jadwal untuk imunisasi. Kemudian ada catat frekuensi sakit dalam satu semester berapa kali sakit, ada sakit sakit yang berat tidak? Itu biasanya diwawancara sebelum masuk sekolah. Nah, itu wajib diwawancara, wajib diwawancara, wajib diketahui jika terjadi apa-apa sama anak. Jadi guru bisa antisipasi nanti ya. Wajib ditanyakan sebelum masuk sekolah anak ini punya. Penyakit bawaan nggak punya penyakit berat nggak ini wawancara waktu awal ketemu orang tua ya. Nah selama COVID bagaimana? Pertama tetap ukuran, nah ini tetap harus diukur ya orang para orang tua ini harus tetap mengukur tinggi badan, berat badan, lingkar kepala harus diukur. Biasanya diukur lewat posyandu juga nggak masalah, tapi kalau lebih sering diukur juga lebih bagus kan gitu ya. Cek suhu tubuh anak, nah, beli termometer murah tuh 17.000 kemudian not a symptom of shock sore throat dan uh, disease ya macam-macam uh, ya istilahnya untuk mengenali ini covid enggak sih kan gitu ya kita antisipasi aja tapi kalau kita enggak kemana mana ya kita insya Allah aman lah ya kalau tadi prosesnya perencanaan proses sekarang adalah pengolahan nah, pengolahan penilaian ini memang panjang ya ini memang panjang cuma saya akan persingkat saja dengan menggunakan bahasa Indonesia campur ya bilingual mayor, mayoritas bahasa Indonesia bahasa Indonesia aja lah ya jadi nggak selesai penggabungan data yang terkumpul jadi dari observasi wawancara performance anekdot dikumpulkan jadi satu disesuaikan direkap nah seperti itu ya kompilasinya kemudian dihubungkan dengan KIKD-nya oh ini sudah ini kurang belum makanya dicentang centang centang Nah, kita sudah ketahui centang-centangnya itu ada empat ya, BB, MB, BSH, BSB. Ini sudah paham lah guru-guru ya. Nah, kemudian ini memportofolio atau menyimpan, nah, ini mengarsipkan. Nah, ini penting banget karena kadang-kadang untuk sekolah-sekolah tertentu ya enggak semua sekolah ya, kadang-kadang data berantakan, datanya ini Uh, diusahakan ini rapi bu ya untuk nanti untuk apa namanya macam-macam ya ini untuk penting untuk akreditasi dan macam-macam nah semua data penilaian anak baik berupa checklist catatan anekdot semuanya dikumpulkan dalam berkas namanya namanya portofolio kan gitu ya dan diurutkan berdasarkan data nah, nah bisa nanti portofolio yang dikembangkan ditulis uh, dikasih foto ini contohnya portofolio nggak ada nah, nanti ada saya, saya contohnya nanti saya kirimkan ya Kemudian reporting assessment result, pelaporan. Jadi uh, reporting is an activity to convey and monitor the result of teacher as assessment upon of the student. Nah, ini of children ya, bukan student ya, anak ya, fokus ke anak. Interview. Pertama report etik atau etika uh, report etik ya, laporan anak. Uh, gimana cara melaporkan atau etika dalam melaporkan satu? dilakukan dengan tatap muka harus tatap muka langsung walaupun covid nanti diusahakan ya tatap mukanya baik pun atau baik apa boleh 
tapi lebih baik tatap muka karena nanti lebih personal, lebih memahami. Terdapat komunikasi dan didiskusi ini aktivitasnya apa. Jadi bisa bisa diskusi kelebihan anak, kekurangan anak sehingga sehingga ini kita bisa bisa memberikan saran, suggestion-nya bagus banget nanti untuk orang tua dan tetap selalu eh, privasinya dijaga. Nah, privasi anak ini dijaga ya. Kemudian eh, reporting eh, laporannya bisa kala ya. Ini eh, sebetulnya satu semester sudah cukup cuma kalau ada insidental kejadian yang insidental yang wow gitu ya istilahnya ada aksiden yang terlalu apa ya kita harus lapor ke orang tua. Kemudian waktu pelaporannya itu tadi ya ada ada bulanan, harian dan segala macam. Uh, tapi yang paling penting semester ya. Nih, uh, ini biasanya kalau normal kita ada placement, uh, tapi kalau new normal atau during covid home visit wajib wajib home visit. Nah ini para guru harus wajib home visit ya. Nanti home visit untuk mengetahui karakter anak ini wajib ya di awal-awal kita wajib home visit ini harus ya harus karena hanya melalui video aja nggak cukup tetap karakteristik anak tetap harus home visit ya home hmm. visit kemudian ada penilaian harian ada weekly ada monthly ada semester nah untuk kita bisa weekly langsung disingkat aja nggak harus harian harinya dikumpulkan kita rekap mingguan bulanan ya oke okay lah yang penting semester ya kemudian eh, ini Uh, ini ya apa berkaitan dengan uh, strateginya pertama sekolah ini uh, prinsip kolaborasi orang tua dan sekolah jadi pertama memang harus mengadakan pelatihan untuk orang tua pertama harus orang tua diberi uh, istilahnya pelatihan karena apa penilaian ini atau proses pembelajarannya yang dilakukan itu pelaksananya orang tua gurunya menilai merencanakan dan menilai maka orang uh, sekolah harus mengadakan pelatihan wajib ini Bu. Karena apa? Ketika ini nanti orang tua akan orang tua akan malas akan sambat akan istilahnya sambat itu apa ya? Uh, istilahnya mengeluhnya uh, uh, dan segala macam loh. Uh, uh, gak mengeluh lah. Nah, ini untuk menghindari hal-hal semacam itu disadarkan dulu, dikasih tahu dulu melalui pelatihan awal-awal bagaimana pembelajaran itu. Nah ini jarang dilakukan ya, tapi ini wajib dilakukan. Kemudian baru ditindak lanjuti menggunakan WA line atau group discussion school from discussion group via WA line dan sebagainya untuk bagaimana sih cara pelaksanaan penilaian. Kemudian yang terakhir adalah memberikan feedback atau chat personal ketika ada masalah yang tidak harus dibagikan di grup lan gitu ya itu cara mengkomunikasikan cara penilaian antara kolaborasi dan kooperasi kooperatif antara orang tua. Nah di sini permasalahan yang timbul permasalahan apa dalam penilaian pertama saya bahasa kurang detailnya penilaian oleh guru. Nah ini memang masalahnya maru Indonesia nggak detail catatannya morat marit kemudian penilaiannya penilaian online masih belum bisa maksimal karena apa kemungkinan tool atau alat ini masih kurang ya owner ownership of cell phone of credit from student parent is very low is enggak uh, uh, punya ya istilahnya seperti itu. Nah, penyebabnya apa? Saya, saya, saya pindah dulu ini. Saya enggak kelihatan. Penyebabnya apa? Penyebabnya ya macam-macam. Nah, penyebabnya macam-macam. Pertama penyebabnya adalah rasio antara jumlah guru dan siswa. Gurunya cuma sedikit, siswanya banyak sekali. Penilaian harian enggak enggak akan nggak akan sampai gitu loh nggak akan nggak akan tercatat dan ini masalah di Indonesia kalau di luar negeri mungkin rasionya satu banding delapan kalau di Indonesia satu banding lima belas bayangkan satu orang guru menilai lima belas orang siswa gimana kan gitu ya nah, ini 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 bukan masalah satu sekolah tapi semua sekolah kemudian eh, eh, kemudian ini ya solusinya seperti apa ketika kita tahu seperti ini menambah jumlah guru sesuai dengan rasio yang ideal tapi ya mungkin solusinya tetap semuanya solusinya di anggaran ya karena apa semua itu ini sudah ada korelasi bahwa semakin tinggi anggaran maka kualitas pendidikan semakin tinggi semakin tinggi penelitian jumlah anggaran untuk penelitian untuk pelaksanaan pendidikan untuk segala macam korelasi positif terhadap kualitas pendidikan maka solusi masalah Mister utama Yuda. kita sih semuanya 
Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Okay. Actually, your time is finished. It's out uh-huh. of time. Maybe we can discuss okay, okay, it okay. in the discussion okay, session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> But okay, okay. I okay, you, um you, I hope you. that every participant can gain lots of the knowledge. Actually, uh, that was very informative, Mr. Yuda, that have been sharing to all of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you can still join with us. Okay. Maybe we can jump into the okay. Q&A session. Okay, okay. Still on hold. Okay, Miss Anwar. Unmute yourself, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, there are several questions, but I will choose uh, a little bit, maybe in a high like questions. Actually, uh, maybe it is from Miss Muhammad Izar Safawi. Okay. But thank you again, yeah, Miss Miss Yani, Miss An- Miss Anwar, and Mr. Yuda. Okay. Uh, is it online test or online examination? Is it effective or not? Actually, we can see that lots of the students actually mm, they can open their book or just ask the parents about the the answer. So, how can we measure the validity of the online examination? Maybe uh, Miss Anwar first that will answer this <laughs> because oh. you actually your face is waiting to answer it. <laughs> okay. No, to be honest, this is a difficult question because okay. you know, yeah, this was this situation are very very difficult. But at the same time, for the validity or reliability, because to be honest, this is my my this is my exactly my major, my specialist. So when I'm not sure about the validity for these uh, exams, but at the same time, we don't have any other choice. We must do it. But um, maybe also this is depend on the teachers or the students how they can deal with uh, with these uh, exams. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why it's when you talk. Unmute, please. There is a participant. Anwar, okay, again. Yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I, I mean, this is depend on the teachers or the students, how they deal with the, these exams and they care about them. If you are careless or um, just, I will, I want to take this exam, um, they don't care about the results, they will be careless uh, anywhere. But for the ability for the exams, I'm not sure to it will be like a real a real world. This is just virtual. Maybe they can cheating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. If they can cheating, this will be not not reality or the validity. But this is just the the choice that we have. So complete. <laughs> Okay, complete for Aaron. Maybe mm. Mr. Yuda w- want to answer this. Uh, actually, tadi banyak bang. Uh, uh, lots of the um, information that you've been shared to all of the participants about how to make it is possible for a mm-hmm. teacher, yeah, untuk memaksimalkan mengevaluation. Mm-hmm. Karena uh, apakah efektif maksimal kalau menjawab soal online atau bagaimana itu? Karena banyak yang Cheating ya, istilahnya bisa open book atau um, apa ya banyak tanya ke orang tua misalnya. For me, for me. Yes, or... for you. <laughs> After oh, okay. Miss, Miss Anwar, maybe. Oke. Okay, okay. okay. uh, untuk uh, saya pakai bahasa Indonesia ya. Jadi yes. nanti kamu terjemahkan ya. Uh, jadi intinya uh, penilaian untuk anak usia ini kalau uh, untuk online ya untuk online penilaian yang, yang dilakukan di rumah tidak disarankan ya tidak disarankan tidak disarankan dan jangan dilakukan apa penilaian yang dilakukan uh, oleh mereka pasti nanti orang tua terlibat dan segala macam maka yang wajib melakukan penilaian hanya guru melalui apa tadi sudah dijelaskan karya melalui catatan anekdot catatan harian jadi itu yang dinilai tugas orang tua hanya merekam yang melakukan adalah misalkan tugas hari ini adalah kemandirian mereka terus merekam kemandirian anak melalui kegiatan yang ada di rumah misalkan ya bersih bersih menata kamar tidur dan segala macam tugasnya orang tua bagaimana mereka berkaitan dengan ibadah ya merekod mereka mengaji dan segala macam yang menyimpulkan 
Jadi tidak ada tes untuk anak usia dini atau TK tidak ada tes ya. Saya ulangi untuk anak usia dini. Mungkin untuk primary school atau untuk elementary school oke okay, ada tes. Tapi untuk anak usia dini nggak ada tes ya. Untuk okay. anak usia dini nggak yes. ada tes. Jadi penilaiannya tetap pakai observasi, wawancara dan lain-lain. Oke. Okay. So for um, okay, okay. early childhood education, there is no uh, online test for, for all of the teachers. Maybe you can sweep into observation or just a uh, record or just a project so the last final decision will be on the teacher's hand maybe miss yani want to add some okay some answer please unmute yourself first oh no actually mm -hmm. I... okay Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Unmute my microphone. Okay. There is a technical problems with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Childhood. Uh, okay. Wait. Um. Actually, there are lots. Of, okay. Voice? Yes. Right now it's clear. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move to An Anwar again, maybe while Miss Yanis present uh, or prepare the audio sound. Um, actually, we are running out of time, but I want to make sure that you can give up us a brief highlight about the online or just like online examination or how can we reach uh, like attitude or just skills to all of the primary schools or just uh, uh, primary school students actually, actually in this COVID era, how, how can teachers briefly, easily can can easily um, gather the data about their students. Yes, yes. Okay, Miss Anwar, can you answer it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ask about about what exactly? About the skills and attitudes that teachers can gather in COVID era. Yes. How can we measure we... that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they can measure for you mean for online online test. Yeah, it it will be it will be easy for for them. Maybe we you they can um they can do a questionnaire press, press. maybe or some. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Continue, Hello. please. <laughs> yes. They they can they can do uh, online exams or questionnaire like this. Maybe they can use another option to uh, to do the um, the exams online, but this will be so difficult. If face to face, uh, every student will take a, a session alone. So they they have multi multi purpose. They can um, they can take the online okay. uh, online test or online exams. But the, the most important thing, they must check about the, how the students uh, take uh, information or understanding the material uh, in a good way. Because uh, really, some students now, they don't just uh, depend on the, uh, the test or the exams. Um, some of them like or prefer to teach uh, self-taught. This uh, also depend on the students. So uh, I know this is very difficult, but the teachers must uh, cope with the situation to take the students uh, um, online exam or maybe some assignments or uh, to do experimental experimental things like to do a project. So also this depends on the, the age if they was in, in uh, I mean, I mean the age in primary school or secondary like this. But now we talk just about the primary school, so the online exam or some assignments, this will be benefit for, for them. Okay, thank you. 
Maybe Miss Yani. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Can you Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think I'm agree with Mr. Yuda that in early childhood education, we cannot use tests for assessment uh, uh, what, development development of child, uh, early childhood. Yeah, but in elementary school, uh, to increase the validity of online tests, uh, maybe we can combining with other assessment ways. Yeah, uh, maybe something like. Uh, Anwar said that we can use project, we can use uh, uh, what is uh, observation or uh, our interview for our student, something like that. Thank you. Yeah, maybe we have in the last session, I guess. But thank you again. Uh, Mr. Yuda, Miss Anwar. Ini ada pertanyaan banyak nih. Saya yes. bisa menjawab bentar aja. Oke, okay. okay. <laughs> but yeah, maybe uh, just one or two minutes maybe Mr. Yuda uh, because okay. we are running out of time. Ini saya ringkas ya. Pertama, okay, great. pertanyaan dari uh, Dwi Indrawati berkaitan dengan bagaimana jika lagi dari Mimi. Yes. Ini, uh, bagaimana cara menilai anak yang malu melakukan kegiatan uh, kegiatan ya? Jadi saya bahas satu-satu tapi mm. berkaitan dengan Oke, okay, maybe kelas. Mr. Yuda, Mr. Yuda, may I uh, interrupt you again? Maybe we can uh, hmm. share the answer for, uh, using a WhatsApp group maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because okay. maybe uh, oh, mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Yes. We also we already put it uh, our emails I maybe mm -hmm. they can text us or using yeah, a chat so box. Yeah, actually, yeah, you've already mm -hmm. sent uh, the answer using a chat yeah. box. Uh, maybe Mr. Yuda also you can use that because actually our time is <laughs> and right now I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three, three minutes. Maybe. Minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yang pertama <laughs> untuk menilai ini ya karakter ya menilai karakter ya. Pastinya harus home visit karena penilaian karakter itu nggak bisa selain home visit ya karena karakter harus ketemu langsung wawancara kepada orang tua home visit ketemu anak itulah bagaimana menilai karakter kemudian bagaimana jika orang tua itu bekerja makanya tadi untuk kita nggak memberatkan untuk orang tua rekapnya harus memang satu minggu jika orang tua tidak bisa melakukan daily report istilahnya daily note maka bisa direkap malam hari mungkin aktivitasnya dilaporkan pokoknya intinya selama minimal tiga hari sekali dia harus melaporkan sehingga bisa direkap selama satu minggu kemudian bagaimana cara cara anak supaya tidak malu makanya tadi ada yang disebut dengan penilaian dengan metode wawancara jadi wawancara ini bisa menggali pemahaman pengetahuan yang dimiliki oleh anak supaya anak dan ini harus interpersonal communication jadi kita yes. Kekuatan interpersonal ya. dengan anak sehingga anak mau bercerita okay. uh, terbuka dengan kita itu mm -hmm. mungkin itu aja ya. Yes. Jadi hanya. Thank you so much. Actually, Mr. Yuda have already highlighted uh, the uh, the answer. Uh, actually, there are lots of questions, oh, yeah. but unfortunately we have a running out of time. So maybe I would like to thank you again with all of the participants mm -hmm. and Mr. Yuda and thank you to Anwar mm -hmm. and Miss Yani. I hope that you can get lots of the knowledge uh, actually for all the participants and inside from this webinar. And may I add information again? Actually, we have uh, our next conference, actually, ECBE, Educational uh, Early Childhood and Primary Education uh, Conference that will be held in October. Actually, this uh, webinar, sorry, this conference uh, publications is uh will be published in web of science and um, i hope that you can gain lots of the knowledge from all of the webinar series from one to fourth actually this is the last well i hope this is the end of this webinar ladies and gentlemen okay may i say thank you again for joining this webinar i hope you enjoy the programs and we hope to see you again in our last webinar in friday okay thank you Wassalam. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the last session and I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mana. Thank you, thank thank you, you Mr. Thank Yuda. You, thank thank you. you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you all of you all.